before i could say her head fell eyes open mouth open and then i saw her for me i just froze and i didn't know what to say then i touched her neck and there is no pulse i knew she had gone I migrated uh, with my family to Australia. And as soon as I landed, I joined Melbourne University for my PhD. So my wife was alone in the house. She was getting bored. She got uh, said I I'm going to go for some home budgets and then you know so that while you are doing research and I will let me go. So she started going for home budgets which happened to be Swami's uh, home budgets. So that's where she got inducted into Swami. singing songs in the, in the bhajans and nothing and then later we actually became a member in the samiti in melbourne so she started going to samiti so i used to go and drop her and then bring back but i never got attracted to swami so i used to sit uh, at the back seat of the of the some you know samiti auditorium in a, it was actually conducted in a church in melbourne <coughs> i used to sit at the back watch the with fun and uh, you know and uh, you know without any interest in joining that group but listening to the songs and everything and at the end when they bring vibhuti i used to take a little bit from there no more active participation in any of the samiti activity or anything just be there just give my wife an opportunity to be there and then once the program is over i used to take her back home that was my like a driver in and out but swami had different plans for me <coughs> so one day the one of the charity organizations uh, lady came uh, she said uh, we were doing a morning breakfast program you know we need some 27 liters of milk we are not getting 27 liters only 5 liters of milk we are getting so if some if the sai devotees can help so we can 27 liters of long life milk we can feed the children because most often we go uh, you know with less quantity and we add water dilute and also the moment she mentioned that we are adding water how could this happen ever happen i would not feed my son or my child Uh, adding water to the milk and then giving them a breakfast this should not happen it does not matter which organization it is this cannot happen so immediately i looked at my wife and we agreed we started delivering milk you know 30 liters of milk because they were getting now 30 regularly and plus they were having some milk so they wanted to expand it to two schools the two schools they wanted 40 then we also increase our quantity to 40 because we have determined that no child should be given a diluted milk so in respect does not so the schools went to 11 schools and then our uh, contribution to that particular seva activity from 27 liters it went to 120 liters every week then we didn't want to deliver it in the publicly in the samiti we delivered it in a, one of the house to the house directly to the charity organization directly but what happens is the ch- the doors of charity is difficult to open but moment is opened is it difficult to close so this we are realized and swami knew that our uh, being a you know family with uh, no children my love towards children is one of the trigger points and and then he also knows that i love to say do seva and uh, when i looked at their songs in samiti they were all singing sarva dharma songs on allah yesu everything so i used to wonder that this is nothing different from the ramakrishna paramahamsa's sarva dharma principle so i should probably i started liking that but i didn't want to get involved in the organizational activity but the two years of my indulgent uh, uh, indulging in this activity the samiti's uh, chairperson came one day she said see uh, those are both of you that your wife and yourself are doing wonderful seva to the children and uh, now because of that the program has expanded to 11 schools why don't you become the service uh, coordinator 
I said, no, I don't want to become a service coordinator because I don't want to know about Swami and I am just coming here to help my wife. You are all doing great service. I am just supporting the service activity. No more. I don't want to be part of it. She said, no, 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 no. You are all doing with love. Swami wants service with love. You are doing with love. You are the right person for it. You must join. So I finally, you know, you know, agreed to be the service coordinator on one condition that I will not discuss about Swami and and the thing, wow, Swami, all the stories behind Swami, I will not get involved in that, any of the discussions, no satsang, I will just do service, activity, plan it, execute it, like a typical manager, and then walk away. This is how Swami pulled me inside. One year later, I wanted to know about Swami. I said, what Swami stands for? You know. So we, myself, my wife, both of us, we, we traveled to Puttaparthi in the year 2000. We stayed, we planned to stay for a week, and during the week on a Thursday evening and myself and my wife were discussing about some financial matters and my I wanted to invest or do certain things on a, about about funding she was not agreeing to that so we had got into a little bit of a um, agree to disagree situation but she was also upset because I was bent upon doing what I decided to do but she was not agreeing to it so she is she was upset that uh, her point of view is not taken. I'm still going ahead with my my plans of uh, whatever I wanted to execute. So she was upset. She said, "Sorry, and uh, I don't want to take dinner today. If you want, you go and have your dinner. I'm not going for dinner." I I knew she was upset. I said, "See, we have come to Swami." At the time, I said, "We have come to your Swami's ashram. You know, you shouldn't behave like this. You should not get angry." Okay, you should go and have your food. I should go and have my food. Let us discuss this matter subsequently when after we go back to Australia. She said, no, I, am, I have decided not to have my dinner. If you want, you go. So after quite some time of trying to convince her, she was not agreeing. So I got a little bit upset and angry too. I told her, okay, if you are not going to have your dinner, let me also not take my dinner. So I am not that stone-hearted husband who leave the wife you know, empty stomach and then go have food for myself. So I have said, I am also not going to take dinner since Thursday is your, your Swami's day. So let me also not eat. Let this be fasting for Swami, angrily I said. Then both of us uh, slept, of course, you know, with the empty stomach, it is difficult to sleep. We are rolling on the, on the, on the bed. We could not sleep for some time. Finally, you know, morning came, I got up, I did my Gayatri Japam, being a Brahmin. And then I said, I am going for Darshan. I moved on to Darshan. I had a wonderful Darshan of Swami. Then I came out. Those days, the, the South Indian canteen, opposite South Indian canteen, there is a bookshop used to be. The book, now, the current bookshop is moved to new place. Earlier days, that is what used to be. So, I wanted to know about Swami. The whole purpose of me coming to Swami in 2000, after becoming the service coordinator, is to, to know more about Swami. I have first hand experience. So I, I got into the bookshop, I wanted to buy some book because nobody recommended any book to me. So I went inside the shop, I was looking at the books and so many languages, Hindi, Telugu, Tamil, I had no idea what to buy, which book would give me a, a taste of Swami, to know about Swami. <coughs> so I, I, I was touching the books on the shelf. As I was touching and my hands were moving, one book when I touched, I had a wonderful feeling in my heart warmth feeling. I picked the book. The name of the book was The Gems, Gems of Wisdom. The book is a green color book, it's 50 rupees and it's an outline of Swami in the front page with the Swami's lotus feet photograph at the back. Suddenly a thought came, everybody says Swami and he is walking here. If he is God, he should answer me. Why not I ask him, is this the book for me? So I said, Swami, I have taken this book, whatever it is, Please tell me, is this the appropriate book for me? Then I opened the book. It's about 500 pages. I opened the book at random. The page number 317. I'm talking about the old edition. New edition pages have changed. The 317, I, my uh, you know, eyes attract, got attracted to a second paragraph. In that Swami's st statement, Swami, this is all about Swami's various statements made at various discourses. These are collected and organized in different topics like that. So when I opened it, 317, second paragraph attracted my attention. 
And there Swami says, the Lord needs a sincerity and devotion from the disciple. If you are awake on a Shivaratri day because you are of your illness, it will not win his favor. Next line, if you quarrel with your wife, if you don't eat the food for the whole day, it will not be considered as fast. Then if you are intoxicated, it is not considered samadhi, etc, etc. Swami's discourse is written there. The moment I read that if you quarrel with your wife and if you don't eat the food for the whole day, now I only missed dinner, day, it is not considered as a fast. I do not think there is, there is, cannot be any direct message anywhere beyond this. I am a scientist, everything has to be rational, experiments to be repeatable, you know, statistically validated. You know, when you have gone through the rational thinking, just imagine what is the probability of me picking a book at random from the shelves, opening the book at random, reading a paragraph at random and there the message is exactly the most appropriate message. Because that is what I asked, is this a book appropriate for me and Swami answered my call. That one incident, it may appear to be the smallest incident in many people's life. Ah, what is it? Somebody opened a book, he read it, okay, it may be a coincident. But for me, it is a turning point. And I knew that Swami is Antaryami. But my wife, although she came to Swami because she was getting bored that I was doing research and she came to Swami for singing and just to get herself busy, she was not ready. She used to accompany me, help me in various activities and all, but she was not all that, you know, determined that nothing matters, so let us go to Puttaparthi and live. But something has to happen. So I prayed to Swami, Swami, I am very keen to come and live in Puttaparthi to serve you. But my wife is still not ready for various reasons. You have to help. This is my prayer to Swami. In the year 2002, after two years time and then one of my friend's daughter, she was doing a Bharatanatya Marangetram in Melbourne. So we, my wife, because after a long time we were going for a, such a function, uh, not Swami's activity but uh, some function like this. So she dressed up beautiful, you know, silk sari with all the decked with all jewellery which were not used for many months. So she decked up very nicely, dressed up, we went, had a wonderful uh, um, first half of the Bharatanatyam. And the middle uh, interval time, she, we went and met everybody, we had good snacks and everything, we came back and then she sat on the chair and then two, two dance programs were over, two more had to go to conclude the program. She said, uh, I am not feeling good, I am feeling little, you know, giddiness. I told her, I sat next to her, I told her, uh, probably because this room is uh, 800 people are close inside in a close room the oxygen levels are getting low because everybody breathing in. So, uh, you take a deep breath few times, you should be alright. If you feel comfortable, we will go out to the auditorium for some time. Before I could say, her head fell, eyes opened, mouth opened and then I saw her, for me, I just froze and I did not know what to say. Then I touched her neck, uh, there is no pulse. Then I shook her up took the body, her head was moving like this and uh, there is no speech and nothing is coming out. I knew she has gone. So I, it was, the whole world was crumbling in front of me because we have no children, we are just two people serving Swami, living happily, you know, doing whatever we can to the society, service a little bit here and there. <clears throat> but suddenly one t minute before she was talking, next minute there is no pulse, everything is gone. And then uh, the neighbor the person was sitting, he said, what happened? He said, she's, I think she has gone. She's uh, no pulse, nothing, you know. Immediately he stopped the dance program and then they switched on the lights and the doctors in the auditorium. Because there are 800 people, there are many doctors were there, so they all came running. Yeah, doctors uh, who came and checked, there is no sign of life. They, they said, put her, put her on the floor, put her on the floor and all. So we carried her from the chair and put her on the floor. Then she was lying, you know, like a Mahalashmi, I would say in Tamil. You know, she was lying there with fully nicely dressed up with all the jewellery, everything and mouth open, eyes open. After a few minutes, I closed her eye like a dead body closing and closed her mouth also. When somebody, uh, let's say that oxygen to the brain is, is not 
given uh, delayed beyond three minutes, it can cause irreparable damage. When she has fallen on the chair, I was shaking her. I was frozen. I could not even speak and tell the neighbor that my wife has gone. And then the, the arangatram stopped and then she, they were, she was put on the floor. And then by the time ambulance was called and the ambulance came, it's quite a bit of time. It's not much beyond three minutes the general norms the doctors have. So ambulance came quickly. And then they put the stretcher next to her. The, the paramedic was about to carry her body into the stretcher. That's at the moment she got up saying Sahira. And then uh, they were all surprised how she got up. And then they put her in the chair and then they took her in the ambulance. I, I followed her to the hospital. The whole night myself and my close friends were there throughout the night. And then um, they were investigating her, the reason for her uh, losing her you know, life in between. And then suddenly she's coming back, what could be the reason? During the time in the, they took the x-ray of the lungs and they found fluid in the lungs. Then they found, they, one of the theories proposed during the night investigation, night of investigation that probably she has lung cancer. The cancerous cells pumped into the heart, destabilize the heart, so heart stopped for a short while. And during that time, the, the blood flow to the brain is stopped and then oxygen to the brain stopped because of which she fainted and then oh, and then all then she she got revived and all those things then whole night was really a, a really really a very nightmarish another important thing is when this happened i never called on swami we all think that oh when the at the time of things like you know the gajendra and all those people you know talk or even draupadi everybody called krishna narayana they, God came to help. But for me, at that moment, I just froze. You know, completely, you know, I had not, no thoughts, nothing, completely froze. You know, not thinking of God and calling God for his help, nothing happened. I just froze. So, believe it or not, brothers, unless you are continuously doing the chanting, thinking of God, when you're really in trouble, you will not remember him. Because this is my personal experience. On that moment, I could not call Swami. Now I would call Swami for every minute, every breath. I have been with Swami and I have been tuned by Swami, so I, my situation has changed. But it takes a lot of effort and time and prayers and meditation. So continue that. That's what I would say. So when next day morning, I, I went early morning, I said, okay, she has been investigation going on. Let me go home and take bath and do my prayers to Swami and then come back. So I went home, which is about 50, 60 kilometers away from the Manash Medical Center. I went home took shower, prayed to Swami, took some rest and then came to the hospital. When I came to the hospital, it was around 10 o'clock. She was already standing on the road. I asked, what happened? You know, no, they said, uh, they again investigated the same thing, whatever they did yesterday, uh, all symptoms disappeared. The uh, fluid in the lungs gone, blood pressure is normal, everything is normal, EEG normal, everything is normal. They said, it's, they wrote in the certificate, discharge certificate, uh, unexplained phenomena of fainting. And they given a discharge certificate and they asked me to go home. He said, they said, you are perfectly all right, you can go. I came back. Then we were talking about this, you know, this miracle, what happened and all. Then she said, see, now I realize the life is very, very uncertain. You know, we don't know one minute I am there, next minute I am not there. And uh, I think rest of our life we should spend with Swami. So I am ready to go. She asked me, are you ready to go? This is something, you know, my answers were prayed, and, uh, and my prayers were answered by Swami. Because I have been praying to Swami, that she is not ready, it's up to you. This is one blow on her head to show that the world the, is totally, you know, the, everything is, you know, transient and moving, like a passing clouds. If you have an opportunity to be with God, you should be with God. So it has completely changed her, um, you know, her perception of what how we should conduct our lives. So we decided to move from Melbourne to Puttaparthi. You know, Australia, there is a rule that you can retire. Choose the retirement age anywhere between 55 to 65. You can choose. At the time, your superannuation, all the funds and monies will be returned. So I was 53 in 2003. One of the thoughts going in our mind is that 
why not work for two more years till 55, earn a couple of years more salary. Swami anyway blessed us. So we will move after 55. So that we will take the retirement so that we can get all our superannuation, provident money, everything we will collect. So because when we go to Swami, we are not going to work and make money. We are going only with the intention of to be with Swami and to serve Him. So not for earning money. So that is very, very clear about it. So we decided that we will do that. But after two days, the mind will, you know, thinking, heart will say, hey, God is on the earth. Avatar is walking. This is what you are longing for. Both of you are ready to go. You have only two people. You have no children. What money you earned is more than sufficient. You know, maybe two generations. Why do you want more money? No, no. The mind will say, oh, if I earn two more money, I can do more service. And after some time, heart will say, no, 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 is enough, is enough, you just go. So, this was dilly-dallying going on in the mind. Being a spiritual coordinator at the time, every day is my duty is to read a thought for the day. So, one of the days, you know, I got, I, I got up, I selected a paragraph from the gem, Gems of Wisdom because that became my Bible. For every problem I used to open, I used to get a solution from the book. So, in that book, it was, there was something about Shivaratri. So, I wanted to, because having come from Shivaratri, I thought I should talk about Shivaratri. So, I selected a page with Shivaratri. Unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, I did not note down the page number. So, when I got up to read the thought for the day, before in front of 150 people in the, in the, in the church, uh, so I devotees waiting for, to listen to the Swami's thought for the day, the book got closed. I was flipping through the page, trying to find the page where I wanted to read the message. I could not. One minute passed, Swami is waiting, everybody looking. Then I knew that any further delay will embarrass everybody, particularly not Swami. Swami, we don't want. So I said, Swami, I am not. I am unable to find the page. So now I will open the page at random. Whatever message you want to deliver, it is your message, you deliver to them. I opened the page at random. It is page number 398. It, I, I'll sh I'll, next time I will bring the book, you can probably you can see the book. In that there is a boxed item, it is written there, the, the darkness and light cannot co coexist in the same place and same time. Similarly, Dana, the richness and Deva, God cannot be joint ideals. If you want Dana, forget about Deva. If you want Deva, forget about Dana. If you want Dana as well as Deva, what you get? Dhanava, Devil, Baba. So I read it and everybody was happy. At the end of the thing, everyone came to me, hey, wonderful message, how did you select it and all those things. Until that time, he did not strike to us that this is actually a message for our family. Swami telling us, hey, if you want me, forget about all the money earning, two years earning, etc. Pack your bags, come. If you want money as well as me, you what you are going to get is only devil. Okay, so immediately the moment we you know we realize that this message is for us, we said, forget it, Swami is best. Whatever money we have, we'll take it. We'll put the house on sale. So on October 18, 2003, we put the house on auction. We sent a fax to Swami in, in Central Trust. We sent a fax to Swami. Swami, we are putting the house on sale. We would like to come and settle down by end of January because normally when the auction is done, three months time is given for the person who is committed to buy to settle the money. Otherwise, you lose the 10 percent deposit in the few, the standard rule in auction regulations in Australia. So, October, three months, January and we can be with Swami because on 9th of February, it's 1979, myself, my wife Revati, we got married. 2004 is 25th year. So our earning is that we should be with Swami. Nothing like, you know, you are celebrating a silver jubilee of your wedding anniversary and being with Swami. But what happened on the auction day, uh, only few people turned up. It is a beautiful sunny day, uh, wonderful day for auction, but unfortunately only few people turned up. And after a lot of competition, finally the price was sealed at $60,000 less than the minimum price we set for sale. Because we have taken mortgage, we have to clear certain loans before I have some money in hand to, be live, to live in in, in, uh, in Puttaparthi. So something was telling a uh, very clear indication that you know the we cannot sell the house. But the agent was 
uh, telling that this market is down, this is the best price one could get and all those things. I said, no, there is, there is something, definitely something going on here. So I'm not going to sell. And then uh, I approached other agents. They said, see, Christmas time, nobody will buy. Now the Christmas is approaching. So only after Christmas I can sell. So don't worry about it. We'll do it later. So I, I arranged a second agent. I, around the end of January, we started selling all our things. So we wanted to clean. So when the moment the house sold, we wanted to get out of Melbourne and come here. So most of the things were sold except for a few things in the house was lying. On 23rd of January, my wife said, see, we have sent a fax to Swami that we will be with Swami by end of January. We want to show Swami that we are very serious about this. Not just we are sending some facts and saying something and we are not turning up in Puttaparthi. I am going to go to Puttaparthi. You sell the house and come. I was a little uh, upset because on a 25th anniversary we wanted to be with Swami. But second thought came as a husband, the best gift I, I can give to my wife is to be with Swami on her 25th wedding anniversary. I said, okay, you go there, make our presence felt, tell Swami we are serious and let Swami help me to sell this house. I will sell and come. So she left on 23rd. So everything was removed from the house, not even a car, you know, I think I was sleeping on the floor. It's a huge house in a very cold, you know. And uh, on February 18th, on Shivaratri day, being a spiritual coordinator, we had whole night bhajans, everything was going on. On 18th morning after Aarti is over, we were just sitting and chatting, having Swami's prasadam. The phone call from the second agent came. He said, hey, we, I found one buyer. He wants to buy your house at the minimum price we stated, but he wants six months to settle. Okay? If you want immediately, he will sell, or he will only give $30,000 less. If you can wait for six months, he will give you the, the full money which you asked for. I said, forget it, six months, sign. I don't mind, I don't want money immediately. So signed off. So I signed off. So and then I was planning to resign from IBM and uh, on for end of February because there's no point in signing resigning immediately end of February so that by April 1st I can be here. Um, but on 25th of February IBM approached me because I'm a senior manager there and then they called me and said Chase you are you know we know you are a very good manager. Unfortunately, due because the client is asking for a lot of cost cutting exercise, so we have decided to shift your department, the entire operations to, to Bangalore, IBM in Bangalore. And so you cannot migrate to IBM uh, in Bangalore. So you, we will allow you to search for a job for one month within, within IBM in Australia. <clears throat> if you find a place, well and good. Otherwise, we will give you a package. I said, package? Because just imagine if I sold the house in October, I would have resigned in January 1st and 1st of February I would have left. I would not have earned even one paisa extra. I would have just got my salary and walked out. On, on Swami delayed it and then I am 25th, I been voluntarily coming and say, you know, we you know try for a month if otherwise we will give you a package. Then you know, I just put up a show, oh this is what happened to the senior manager, the two even important managers, if people treat me like this, I don't want to be here even one more minute, I want to leave. I just, just, just a drama. Basically, I wanted to get out and come to Swami. And then, believe it or not, brothers, the check I received after taxation is almost equal to the amount I would have earned otherwise by working for two more years, which was the original thought. Immediately, we, I took the flight and came to uh, in March here. So, I followed Swami to Vrindavan on 20th of uh, April 2004. Swami came in the Darshan line because remember that time Swami has already broken the hip, he was not walking. Just few days before he started walking, on the day, he walked in front of me, he took the letter up to the next person, then he turned around and then he was planning to go other way. I was praying, Swami, Swami, what is this? He was standing very close to me, you are, you are close, so close, you are so far away. I was praying, please, please turn and then take my letter. Then Swami took 180 degrees and looked at me. He took the letter, he was walking away. But so inside, the voice was prompting. Talk to me. Talk to me. Like that. But I had no courage. I was saying that, how can I? Swami is already moving away. I, how would I talk to him? But, but 
after one person cross, he is possibly going to second person. Very strong voice. Talk to me now if you want to. Then he says, Swami. Then Swami turned. Like they looked at me, what? Swami, I want to serve your university, Swami. Then he moved closer. Where? Prashantin Lame. What subjects? Maths and computer science. He nodded his head like this. Then I had the courage. Swami, we left everything from, from Australia, we came here. Swami looked at me, smiled. Romba Santosham in Tamil. Chala Santosha in Telugu. He said and walked away. So that is how Swami took me on the fold. Mm -hmm.